हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू ई लर्निंग प्लेटफॉर्म ऑफ डॉक्टर बापू जी सॉन्ग के इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग एंड टेक्नोलॉजीज मैकेनिकल इंजीनियरिंग डिपार्टमेंट इन प्रीवियस सेशंस वी हैव ऑलरेडी स्टार्टेड विद अवर यूनिट नंबर सिक्स दैट इज सिलेक्शन ऑफ एंटी फ्रिक्शन बेरिंग्स एंड गियर्स एंड इन दिस सेशन वी विल बी कंटिन्यूइंग अबाउट द सेम सो लेट्स टॉक अबाउट क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ स्लाइडिंग कॉन्टेक्ट बेरिंग so sliding contact bearings are mainly classified into two major groups the first group is the sliding contact bearings according to the mode of lubrication and second is sliding contact bearings according to the relative motion between the two surfaces again the first group is subdivided into two other categories that is hydrodynamic lubricated bearings and hydrostatic lubricated bearings the second major group that is according to the relative motion between the two surfaces this group is again classified into three categories that is guide bearings journal bearings and thrust bearings journal bearings are again classified into two groups that is full journal bearings and partial journal bearings and thrust bearings are classified into two groups foot step bearing and collar bearing so in next uh, slides we can we are going to see the uh, different types of bearing sliding contact bearings individually and in detail so first group that is according to the mode of lubrication the first type is hydrodynamic lubricated bearings in these bearings the load sur carrying surfaces are separated by a stable thick film of lubricant that prevents the metal to metal contact the film pressure generated by the moving surfaces that force the lubricant through a wedge shaped zone and at sufficiently high speed the pressure developed around the journal sustains the load okay so let's see the working of hydrodynamic lubricated bearings so here you can see the three figures in first figure you can see this is our supporting element and this is our shaft so in first case uh, this w is nothing but weight of the shaft and small e is nothing but eccentricity in first case we can see the shaft is at rest in second case it is in rotating starts rotating and in third case it starts rotating at full speed okay so let's talk about the working so initially when the shaft is at rest that is this is our first case when the shaft is at rest the shaft both the shaft and bearing are in contact due to the self weight so due to the self weight of the shaft the bearing surface and the shaft are in contact with each other in second case that is when the shaft starts to rotate in clockwise direction so in this case you can see this shaft is rotating in the clockwise direction it climbs over the bearing surface so it tries to climb over this bearing surface uh, here you can say this is the lubricant that is this dotted part is nothing but our lubricant as the speed of the shaft is further increased so you can see in the third case the lubricant is forced into the wedge shaped region and pushes the shaft to the other side so when the shaft starts rotating at full speed this lubricant tries to pushed into this surface that is wedge shaped surface that is that is you can say it as oil wedge and the shaft uh, pushes the shaft to the other side of the uh, portion other side of the uh, surface since more and more fluid is forced into the wedge shaped clearance space the pressure is generated within the system and due to that pressure this external load of the shaft is supported since the pressure is created within the system due to the rotation of the shaft this type of bearing is known as self acting bearings and for this type of bearings it is not necessary to supply the lubricant under pressure but only requirement is that uh, there is sufficient and continuous supply of the 
lubricant so this is all about the working of hydrodynamic lubricated bearings second is hydrostatic lubricated bearings in these bearings the load supporting the fluid film separating the two surfaces is created by the external source like pump supplying sufficient fluid under the pressure since the lubricant is supplied under pressure this type of bearing is called externally pressurized bearing these types of bearings do not require the motion of the surfaces to the generate to generate the lubricant film hence they can operate from very low speed to high speed so this is the figure for working of hydrostatic lubricated bearings so here again you can see we have two cases that is this is our first case and this is our second case so in first case when that is the shaft is at rest so both the shaft and bearings are in contact due to the self fit so due to the self fit of the shaft the bearing surface and shaft are in contact with each other as the pump starts so here you can see when the pump starts it forces high pressure lubricating oil inside the clearance space so due to this pump the oil is forced into this clearance space this high pressure oil lifts the shaft and forms a layer of lubricating oil around the shaft keeping the shaft floating in the bearing so due to this high pressurized lubricating oil the film is formed outside the shaft and which helps to uh, uh, maintain uh, uh, which helps to uh, reduce the friction or maintain the maintain some distance between the bearing surface and the shaft of the uh, element okay so this is the working of hydrostatic lubricated bearings so our second major group is classification of sliding contact bearing according to the relative motion between the two surfaces in that our first uh, bearing is guide bearing so figure shows the guide bearing in which you can see the sliding contact bearings or in which the sliding action is guided in a straight line and carrying radial loads are known as slipper or guide bearings so here the load is acting perpendicular to the axis of the shaft so the load is acting perpendicular to this line so uh, and carrying sliding motion is provided to carry the radial loads so such type of bearings are also called as guide bearings such types of bearings are usually found in cross head of steam engines guide wheels of lathe machine and piston cylinder assembly in ic engine second is journal bearings the sliding contact bearings in which the sliding action is along the circumference of a circle or an arc of a circle and carrying radial loads are called as journal or sleeve bearings such type of bearings are usually found in ic engines hoisting drums and centrifugal pumps so the journal bearings are again classified into sub categories that is first is full journal bearing so figure shows the full journal bearing when the angle of contact of the bearing with the journal is 360 degree then the bearing is called as full journal bearing it can withstand loads in radial direction and this type of bearing is commonly used in industrial machinery second type of journal bearing is partial journal bearing so figure shows the partial journal bearing in which when the angle of contact of bearing with the journal is 120 degree then the bearing is called a partial journal bearing it can withstand loads in only one direction this type of bearing is commonly used in railroad car axles so third major group is thrust bearing 
so figure shows the two type of thrust bearings foot be footstep bearing and collar bearing so the sliding contact bearings in which the relative sliding action is pu purely rotational and carrying the loads parallel to the axis of the shaft are known as thrust bearings so in thrust thrust bearing our first type is footstep bearing so in it is a thrust bearing in which end of the shaft is in contact with the bearing surface so here you can see in the figure the end of the shaft is contact in the bearing surface so if such arrangement is provided then such type of bearing is called as footstep or pivot bearing second is collar bearing so it is a thrust bearing in which a collar integral with the shaft is in contact with the bearing surface so here you can see this is the collar which is in contact with the bearing surface so such arrangement is provided uh, is uh, nothing but the collar bearing so here are some advantages of sliding contact bearings first operation can be done at high speed second heavy radial loads can be carried third ability to take up shocks and vibrations and last advantage is operation is noiseless there are few disadvantages of sliding contact bearings first is high frictional losses at the starting point as the bearing surface and and the shaft are in contact due to the self weight the friction is generated the length of bearing is more third is the more lubrication is required and last is more maintenance is also required applications of sliding contact bearings so sliding contact bearings has wide range of applications such as in crankshaft bearings in petrol and diesel engines centrifugal pumps large size electric motors steam and gas turbines concrete mixtures rope conveyors and marine installations so this is all about the sliding contact bearings so if you have any doubt regarding to this sliding contact bearings you can always contact me on this number thank you